welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am looking at the chart right now and I'm just like, ooh, ooh. And I also pulled some cards and I just feel like we should talk. This is your astro and intuitive forecast for the week of February 11th, 2019. At the time of me filming it, I'm looking at the clock and it's 3.33 p.m. Eastern, well, um, Chicago time, apparently. New Orleans time is what I like to say. There's a lot of things that are going on. I pulled some cards this morning and I really sat with them. There are some repeating energies that I've been seeing all this week and this weekend. It's the Seven of Pentacles and the Hierophant, but definitely the Seven of Pentacles and Pentacles energy in general. The visual that I got this morning while I was in my meditation and that I've been feeling all day is this energy of just really taking your hands and placing it down into the earth and sending your energy, positive vibes, healing energy into the earth. Now, I don't know if this is because this week or around the energy of this week into the weekend. Let me see when we have the full moon. Yeah, it could even be just enough that it triggers on the 19th. I just don't know if it's gonna be some type of earth element that is explosive or ignited in some way it can totally show up in our in our government it's so impossible again to know where this energy is going to be coming from because uranus is the planet that is the little bomb this little landmine that's being ignited and triggered by mars not only that but there's a, a tight square not too tight but tight enough where Pluto, the planet of transformation, death, rebirth, and generation, is sitting in the sign of Capricorn. Again, this is Earth, this is government, this is business, this is established organizations. Ah, it's happening! Why is it so loud? Why is that plane so loud? Can you guys hear how loud it is? And I just see something being disrupted and ignited. The one thing is that with that is that we'll see it, we could see it on a global level, we could see it in the news, so we'll, we'll have confirmation of that. They've really been breaking down and transforming the area that Capricorn rules within your chart. Now, for those of you guys that like to call me out and be like, Jessica, this reading is too general, it's not. The reality is, is that this reading that I'm doing is for a wide audience, and I'm not looking at your personal chart in front of me right now, and Capricorn rules something different within everybody's chart. Um, Saturn falls in different placements within your chart and that will influence where you see this energy and how this energy will manifest but either way it's happening and it's manifesting off the top of your head think of the things that you have been experiencing the most struggle and challenges with that's most likely where you will see this Saturn energy kind of you know showing itself and revealing itself over years over years so again at the time of the full moon and this week I mean I the, the, the time that it's exact when Mars and Uranus meet is on the 13th, which is a Wednesday, the day before Valentine's Day, but it's, it's possible that it could be the 19th, the 19th that ignites it, and maybe I'll be the first one on the internet to kind of say that. But again, these planets, they take their time when they're moving, especially Mars and especially Uranus. So the energy of that is just so tight that it can be felt longer than you know just this week and i always see i look at everything and i'm looking at the full moon full moons tend to kind of light the match and set things ablaze but it could happen before that in the meantime i really really want to caution you guys on any reckless behavior any impulse reactions to certain things a lot of the planets right now are so impulsive and i think again this is why I'm seeing us put our hands down and put our hands in the dirt and grounding ourselves. Not only maybe the earth needs it right now because there could be some type of energy that's brewing under the surface, under this, you know, this the surface level, maybe it's an earthquake, volcano, you know, something. You know, I'm not really sure what this is, but it's just and again, Uranus is unpredictable, so we don't know, but I want to, maybe it could be environmental issues. That's another thing too that really concerns me is environment or government or structure because those are the, that's what this energy rules. Maybe there's um, a mass breakout of something or people rebelling, a violence in, in, some, in some way, shape or form. These are things, and why violence? Unexpected violence, unexpected strikes? Well, because Mars rules war, Mars rules weapon, Mars rules fire, this you know activation of that. And both of these planets, Uranus, and Mars are falling in the sign of Aries, which is the sign of the warrior, the sign of, you know, take charge and, you know, being ignited and putting yourself out there in a way that could be, you know, tough, could be really tough to deal with. And Uranus is so unexpected again, 
and it's fire and ice meet together and just bing bang boom we have an explosion there you know because we can't control what goes on in our environment we can't control what goes on around us I really am thinking that and feeling the need to ask you guys to not fight this energy by suppressing it but working with it in a way that is positive and constructive and for that I see you grounding yourself and centering yourself before you jump to a rash decision before you are too impulsive. Now, again, there's so much energy here that is unpredictable and kind of wonky and weird. The sun has been moving through the sign of Aquarius, which, you know, likes to rock the boat in general. So again, it's, you don't really know where this is going to pop off from. There's this e emphasis on, I need independence, I need space, or just kind of breaking free, needing freedom, needing independence. Mercury is just recently moved into the sign of Pisces and has been kind of feeling his way intuitively. Mercury is not comfortable moving to the sign of Pisces, but it's okay. It's just a different way of doing things. It's a different way of processing information. And instead of fighting this, I you really want to flow with it. You really want to work with it. I can't tell you guys how many comments and um, DMs and text messages I've gotten and phone calls of friends being like, I hate Mercury moving to the sign of Pisces. And it's just like, you know what? You need to learn how to work with the planets. You can't allow them to beat you up. And it's not even the planets that are beating you up. It's you that is beating you up. You just simply will not accept that there are different forms of energy out there. And you have to learn, instead of you being rigid and stuck in your ways, learn how to maximize what these planets are trying to teach you like how stubborn it is for you to put these blinders over your ears and over your eyes and just block out what the planets are suggesting and trying to teach you because you think that your way is the best way it's not it really isn't you know the universe is going to smack you across the face only because you are so stubborn you're so rigid you will not see things from a different perspective that's why me personally and my own magic and my own life I will sit back and I will say, you know what universe, I just need you to talk to me. What is it that I need to do? How do I need to move? And even if it's not comfortable for me, it doesn't matter what's comfortable for me. I will float, I will act depending on what they say and I achieve success, I um, achieve a result time and time and time again because I'm working with this energy, I'm not fighting with it, I'm flowing with it, I'm not forcing. If you are forcing, you're moving out of um, fear, you're you're too you're doing too much. It's gonna backfire. If I hear another person saying, "Well, Jess, you know, I don't I don't like this." It's not about what you like or what you don't like. It's not about you. It's and it's so funny because the universe knows the best way to get you to your destination. So you just have to listen to that. You need to heed heed that call and listen to that advice. If not, you're walking in this all alone. And you know, good luck. So, again, you know, Mercury moving through the sign of Pisces, it's almost like being blindfolded and relying on your senses. Is that comfortable for everyone? Probably not. For some people, they really, you know, work with it well, probably because they have Pisces placements within their chart. But, you know, it's just relying on your senses, relying on your intuition, and allowing yourself to kind of sense and feel. And I also think that that's why I'm getting this vibe of us taking our hands and putting it in the earth, because it's almost the same way that animals do, where they pick up on vibrations. If you see like a little caterpillar or an ant, and you pound on the ground, the, pan, the ant feels that and senses it and says, what the hell was that? And they freeze up. They're not looking, they're feeling, they're sensing, they're using other senses that were given to them by God in order to pick up on the vibration. That's what it is that I'm seeing here. I see you guys relying on a different level of senses in order to be like, oh, I don't need to be here right now. Let me back out. Let me go over here because I'm being guided to. And really picking up on that. If you're walking down a street or um, you meet, you, you, you see someone and the back of your hair, like the hair on the back of your neck rises, it's time for you to be out. It's time for you to leave. And if you have a plan in your mind that is, you're, you're just so set in your way and you're like, I'm going to be here at this and this time. And before you go, you just keep procrastinating. You just don't want to go. You, you know, you were excited about it, but it just doesn't feel right. That is again, you being grounded and picking up on those senses, that vibration, which says something is off. You don't need to be there. It doesn't need to make sense to you, but it is there for you to protect you and to guide you. Listen to that and heed that versus you relying on these senses that you have strengthened over time. So everybody has strengths and weaknesses. Let's say you're really good with your eyesight, you're really good with your sense of smell and what it is that you say. Those 
um, senses have been developed because those are your strengths. But the universe says, look, I need you to pick up on your intuition. I need you not to say anything. I need you to hear. We need to strengthen those senses, those gifts, or those areas uh, that we've given to you. We need you to strengthen those and build upon those because you're going to need those in the area that it is that you're walking into. Do not walk into this area without strengthening yourself. Listen to us. So instead of you being like, speaking out and calling out so much, be quiet, be still, and listen. What are you hearing? What are you observing? The ritual that I'm seeing is people just kind of taking their hands and putting it on the earth and picking up on those vibrations. The earth is gonna to speak to you. The earth is gonna to speak to you. So that's how I see it coming through, is through your senses, through vibration, and maybe even for those of you guys that are called to do it, to send that healing out through the earth. So it even emphasizes even further Mars action, drive, ambition, moves into the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by earth energy. So again, this is being way more methodical, way more ritualistic, way more intentional in your progress, your movement, how you act, how you react. Even if the, the world around you is reacting and running for the hills, I want you to disconnect from that connect within, connect with those vibrations before you make your move. That's another reason why I'm seeing these pentacle energy lately, even the Hierophant. The Hierophant can show established organizations, rules and structure, routine that have been placed around you. And this could sig signify government or businesses or whatever, but either way, it's, it's there. And these two cards are very methodical, they're very intentional, they are very observant. The Page of Pentacles is observant in the way that it says, okay, I'm learning in this. I am open to learning. I am open, open to hearing because I want to invest in not just now, but my future and forever. So speak to me, show me, tell me. Meanwhile, the Seven of Pentacles is the card of observing, looking at all that has occurred, looking at all that has grown, looking, looking at what is here in front of you, and even observing energy and picking up on energy before you make your move. These two cards are very much still and steady, including the Hierophant, which is very much set in its ways and rigid. It's interesting too, because one of the things that I wrote down is rigid and dropping your guard. And I think in one aspect of this card is, you know, the potential for this government, the shakeup that it is that I was talking about earlier on in this video. But more than that, I want you guys in your personal lives to be aware of walls that are built up and again if you sense a wall that is there that someone else has put up or if you sense a blockage just go ahead and respect it like honestly just go ahead and respect it it's there for a reason whether it's off limits to you right now because you're not you're just not meant to go in that territory you're not meant to step over that wall you're not meant to break through it if the universe wants to destroy that wall that is there it will trust me Mars and Uranus is legit putting little sticks of dynamite in a wall that's been built up and then hitting that button and it blowing up. But those are things that are outside of your control for the most, from the majority of you. What I'm seeing is for your own self, I see us kind of dropping your guard and not in a way that makes you vulnerable to the attack of others, but dropping your guard for this, for the protection of yourself in order to receive this energy that could be, that could be coming in that is positive when you are guided to be open to it. Instead of having these rigid walls up, which I can see with Saturn and Pluto that's been sitting in the sign of Capricorn, which is all about that wall, all about boundaries and restriction and rules and regulations, I'm almost seeing you yourself working to kind of drop down this wall and observe and to see, okay, this is what's going on around me. I'm not going to tread into this, to this territory because that person is off limits to me. I'm not gonna force my will into that because there's a reason why that person has you know, the wall up. There's a reason why they're protecting. There's a reason why they're pushing back. So instead of you trying to punch your way through it, just go ahead and back off and trust the process. The other thing that I wrote down is letting go and I hate, well, I don't wanna say hate, but I really don't like mentioning that sentence anymore. Like those words, those two words together, letting go, because this is this thing that we just keep on hearing in our spirituality community, the spiritual community, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. And I wish there was another way to say this, but it is what it is. But letting go, again, if you love something, if there's something that you truly want, just let it go. And when we have these 
sticks of dynamite that are blowing up around us or in our environment, the universe is going to rearrange itself. And the way to invite miracles in is to literally let go of your expectation. Try not to be rigid. Try not to force it. Just let it go. Let it go. Sense. And I know, again, for my air signs, for my fire signs, for my water signs, sometimes it can be really hard for you to let go, but try it anyways. Do it anyways. Take a lesson from earth signs, and I'm not saying this because I'm a Virgo, but they really are so methodical and so thought out and intentional with the things that they commit themselves to and what they invest themselves in. And if you put in the hard work, if you are loyal, if you're honest, it will pay off. And that's what these cards are suggesting is that you've invested yourself, you've put in the work, and you're at that point in your life now where you need to observe and you need to pick up on the vibration in order to know, okay, this is what I need to do next. This is what I not, this is what I don't need to do next. The other thing that came through was so incredible to me and it was this, this so clear confirmation and it was so funny how powerful it was but at, at the same time it was so subtle, it was so soft and it was just this gentle reminder that anything truly is possible and it's also very funny because I literally was just writing about that this morning for my um, article that I wrote for astrology.com for the Pisces, the upcoming Pisces new moon, which is this energy of, of, of miracles and the energy of anything can happen. And that, that is what happens when the universe, when you literally let go of your need to control everything, you allow the universe to just do what it does and you'll just sit back and you'll watch it. See, as I'm saying this, my nose is getting tickled again. You'll literally sit back and you'll watch the universe just kind of set off these explosions that are going off around you. And basically what, what's happening is that it's, it's serving a purpose and sometimes it's not in a way that you understand in this moment, but over time you'll be like, damn, I cannot believe, like if I would have known, if I only would have known what was happening here and how things were being arranged, I would have never been scared, I would have never been nervous because everything was so connected and everything happened so explosively in such a miraculous way and our brains, again, I was just saying this to my friend last night after we were sitting at the edge of the Mississippi River, the fog was so thick you guys, the fog was so thick that we couldn't even see at the edge of the Mississippi, we could not see the water hitting the shore that we were standing at. The fog was so thick, I couldn't put my hand out and see. And I remember just, the Mississippi is so magical, but I remember sitting with him, my nose, you guys know like when my nose tickles, it's at the spirits and like angels and my guides, but I remember sitting with my friend and being like, you know what, you have to ask God, you have to ask the divine out of faith for what it is that you want and everything can happen within a month and it's it's and it's that that ability to call it out that ability to sense to you know and even now I'm, as I'm saying this when we were standing at the Mississippi we couldn't see all we could do was hear all we could do was smell and use our senses and that's ultimately what it is that I'm seeing is just putting your hands on the vibration like putting your hands on the earth and picking up on the vibration using senses that you don't normally use in order to receive a message that you wouldn't have heard otherwise and then opening up to this dismantle, dismantling opening up to this rearrangement and instead of forcing really let go and give it to the earth, give it to God, give it to the divine in order to work things out for your best, for your highest and greatest good because that's ultimately what it is that I'm seeing here. Now, choose to believe this or don't choose to believe it. At the end of the day, it's ultimately it's your destiny and you have to listen to your intuition, but what I can say is that there is something here that has been brewing. It is not something to panic over. It's not something to be fearful of. It is not something to force or fight. Even in the witch community, a lot of the larger accounts that you know a lot of people turn to for advice are saying the same thing. That's like when the planets shift, they're uncomfortable. Why are you uncomfortable? You know, why are you fighting this? Why are you, you know, why are you re rejecting this when spirit, the same spirit that you consult, the same um, astrology charts, the same cosmos, the same stars, the same planets that you consult any other day that makes sense to you are the same ones that are speaking to you now, but you just need to become more fluent in hearing their message and listening to their message and listening to their guidance versus fighting it off, punching back out at it. At punching back out of it, the universe is trying to give to you so much more than what you are limited to right now. So that's what it is that I'm seeing for this week, you guys. I honestly, 
the two words that came through is observation and senses and maybe I can send you a picture maybe I could put a picture of tonight at the Mississippi what that looked like and how thick that small that foot fog was funny that I had that visualization and that's what's coming through now as I'm speaking to you guys through this um, through this message share but leave your comments down below make sure that you're subscribed because there's plenty more videos where this came from thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sharing and I'll see you in my next video bye